Hello, everybody. You know me. My name is Eugene Nick Dinsmore, and we are back. Eugene behind the scenes. And I'm ripping my I ain't yet dead yet mother effers. Well, I can't know what side I'm on. From the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Woo! This t-shirt I think he came out with a few years ago when I think he had a little health scare. And everybody thought, Ric Flair, this might be the end of the Nature Boy. And he came out wooing. Strutting, styling, profiling. I dress myself in cash. And put out this shirt, so I bought it. But today on Eugene Behind the Scenes, I want to talk about the April 26th, 2004 episode of Monday Night Raw from Topeka, Kansas at the Landon Arena Kansas Expo Center. Segment eight on Monday Night Raw that evening saw a matchup between Rhino versus Rob Conway with Sylvain Grenier in his corner. During this match, William Regal and Eugene make their way down to the announce table when the announce table on Raw was, was back on the stage. Now, one thing about the Eugene character, the intellectual property in my head about the Eugene character was that Eugene was gonna know all the trivia. He was going to know some obscure fact about something that happened, you know, on a show years ago and the attendance and the gate and who won and some big event. He was going to know it all. Like uh, like a trivia game in the very hard level when it's like, you know, what is this one little question about something that everybody knows about that maybe not everybody knows this one little question. And my obscure fact was that Pat Patterson was the first intercontinental champion Winning the belt in a tournament in Rio de Janeiro in 1979. Pat Patterson, first intercontinental champion, 1979, Rio de Janeiro, French Canadian. That's exactly right. Now, in actuality, I had to go to Howard Finkel to get that precise stat because Howard knew everything. He knew the history. He was WWE's first employee, and he knew everything you know that went on in the history of WWE. So I had to go to Howard Finkel to actually find. Eugene's, uh, Eugene's obscure fact. Now, I found out later, Pat was the first Intercontinental Champion, but Ted DiBiase actually showed up, I'm assuming in 1979, it was the WWWF. Ted DiBiase shows up with a version of the North American Heavyweight title. And I think, from what Ted told me, he lost the title to Pat, and then they switched the name of the title. Because I assume the North American title, there was still a North American title somewhere because that was a, a, a long and illustrious history for a title. And I don't know why Ted DiBiase took it to WWE, but he had told me one time behind the scenes that he actually brought the title and he got switched over to the Intercontinental title. The new North American heavyweight champion, Pat Patterson. But we're live on Raw. Eugene's up in the, uh, up in the announcer's pit and he says Pat Patterson's the first Intercontinental Champion. All right, there's the obscure fact. Eugene then begins to play around and whatnot as Rhino and Rob Conway are wrestling. Eugene then makes his way down to the uh, the pyro booth. Yeah, Whoever that guy fine, is. Fine. Eugene never met a man he didn't like. What? And starts pressing all the buttons and the pyro goes off, which distracts Rob who then gets beat by Rhino, one, two, three. I believe we went to commercial break. We come back up and it was Johnny Nitro before he was all the other Johnnies that he's been. He was uh, Bischoff's stooge in the general management department. I think uh, maybe, maybe Bischoff was not there or gave Johnny Nitro more power, but regardless, Rob Conway and Sylvain Grenier come back to Johnny Nitro and say, you know what? Eugene has really made us so mad, so mad. Eugene and Regal come in. Rob Conway wants to wrestle Eugene. And then we set the match for two weeks later because Eugene needed to be trained first. He was just a kid off the street. Rob Conway versus Eugene. You got two weeks, Eugene. You got two weeks. I don't know how they let him in the building, but my goodness. So the match was set that night for Eugene's first match, which would happen in two weeks' time. One little behind the scenes thing. I remember... I believe it was Rob and Sly and I were traveling with Johnny Nitro. And this was back before they started making us wear like a lot of business casual wear to travel around in. And we could wear stuff like to the gym and then go straight to the show and you're wearing gym clothes and nobody really cared. We get out the car and everybody's getting their bags out. We're in the parking lot to the uh, arena. And I saw a row of fans 50 yards away. I said, Johnny Nitro. Wave to those fans. So he comes over and he's waving to the fans. And again, we're in workout gear. So I pants him his pants all the way down to his ankles. And Eugene runs in the building giggling. And Nitro's trying to pull up his britches. 
that was one that that was one that I I still like the pantsing. That's still a funny one, and I've done it to other people. And I will let you know as you hear more of Eugene behind the scenes. But what I'm what I'm trying to stress in this one is the storytelling and the evolution of the Eugene character. They're slowly giving Eugene dribs and drabs. And then they set up his first match. Week after week, just a little bit of Eugene until finally, you know, we want to see him in the ring. Because eventually, on a wrestling show, it's all got to end up in the ring. And I think this was the point where fans were ready to really fully emotionally invest in the Eugene character. But they weren't so sure yet because they were going to have to see the product in the ring. Which would happen in two weeks' time. And we will go over that on an upcoming episode of Eugene Behind the Scenes. Until that, I ain't dead yet, mother effers. If you haven't seen my previous episodes detailing the evolution of the Eugene character, please feel free to check them out here, here, here.